so what is Botox? Hi, I'm Dr. Casperson. Botox is incredibly effective. I, and I joke with women, I say, listen, medications for overactive bladder, they don't get me hugs. Botox gets me hugs. So in this short video, I wanna to talk to you about overactive bladder, how Botox works, and what the procedure is like. Takeaways from this video. Botox is incredibly common. It's been FDA approved since 2013. It's virtually painless. You come in with some numbing medicine for 10 to 15 minutes, bring a book. Uh, it is third line therapy, so we do have, ask that you fail behavioral therapy first, as well as some medications in order to get your insurance to approve Botox. I want women to feel empowered and in control and understanding of the healthcare options that are available to them. So if you like this video, please subscribe, please like us down below, spread the word. Women are so happy that they don't have to worry about their bladder. They can leave their house. They are spending less money on pads. They don't have to know where every toilet is in the town. The bladder normally works by holding urine until a socially acceptable time to go to the bathroom. So as the bladder fills, our nerves send to the brain and our brain says, not yet, not ready to go to the bathroom and our bladder holds. With overactive bladder, the nerves to the muscle or the muscle itself is more spastic, more overactive. So even though you don't want to go to the bathroom, the sensation in the muscle twitches so that you feel like you have to go. And this is very limiting to your quality of life. Women don't even want to go out of the house. Some women know where every bathroom is on their way to the restaurant. And a lot of family members complain that I can't get mom out of the house because she's too nervous about her bladder and lack of bladder control. Other things women do to try to control overactive bladder is they limit their fluids, which can lead to dehydration or urinary tract infections because they're dehydrated and not emptying their bladder on a regular basis. Two options for overactive bladder are physical therapy and medications. Physical therapy works great, but you have to be motivated to go in to do the activities. And women who are motivated and are successful are very, very happy with physical therapy because it has no side effects and they feel like they fixed it themselves. But what do you do if the physical therapy doesn't work? Or you have a woman that can't make it to physical therapy? Or maybe you live in a town that doesn't have a great pelvic floor physical therapist. Second line therapy for overactive bladder is medications. Most commonly, the anticholinergics. Huge class of anticholinergic medications. You have to take a pill every day. Significant side effects are dry mouth and constipation. There's actually a warning on patients over the age of 65 because there is some relation to cognitive decline and dementia, increased risk of falls. I don't love those medications. I think that they have side effects that sometimes aren't worth the benefit. And they're only about 50% successful regardless of the side effects. Another medication on the market is called Mirbetric, which is the brand name. Works a little bit differently by relaxing the bladder muscle. The biggest issue I see with that medication is insurance doesn't cover it well. Benefit is it doesn't have the dry mouth constipation side effects, but it can be a pretty increased cost. To get to the meat of our talk today, what is Botox? Botox is the brand name for what is called botulinum toxin. It is a uh, compound made from bacteria in a laboratory, just like we make penicillin from mold in a laboratory. It works by decreasing the signal from the nerve to the bladder muscle so that the bladder muscle isn't as twitchy. It doesn't give you that sensation that I have to go all the time or it doesn't leak on the way to the toilet or with running water or all the triggers that women have with their overactive bladder. When it works, they say, I just have more time to get to the bathroom. Leaking on the way to the bathroom is a huge issue for a lot of people with overactive bladder. And I'm talking about women in my talk, but also men can also have overactive bladder. And certainly we do Botox for men with overactive bladder too. So don't feel left out. This condition does not discriminate. Uh, I just tend to see a lot of women and women do tend to have more overactive bladder than men. How well does Botox work? So Botox is more effective than the medications. It's more effective than physical therapy. It, greater than 50% of women, their leakage episodes are reduced by at least 50%. In some studies, at least one in three women are completely dry after Botox. In my practice, we see everybody two weeks after Botox and they state they're commonly 60, 70, 80% and we get 100% better. The other nice thing about Botox is it goes into the bladder so you don't have any dry mouth constipation or any systemic uh, symptoms like you would if you were to swallow a pill every day. How long does Botox last? Botox lasts on average anywhere between six and eight months. Certainly I have some women that need Botox a little bit more frequently, as frequent as every three months. And I have women that don't need Botox more than once a year to, I have some women that come in for their Botox every other year. So it does need to re be repeated. Our body does process it and it does wear out over time. But I tell people it's kind of like going to the dentist. Kind of commit to seeing me two times a year for a 15 minute procedure 
just like going to the dentist. So Botox is FDA approved for overactive bladder and has been FDA approved since 2013. So we have tons of experience using this medication. You must have failed two anticholinergic medications or have a contraindication to the medication and failed behavioral therapy in order for your insurance to cover it. Botox doesn't come first. Botox comes after trying the more simple, uh, less invasive things first. I tell everybody that there's two main risks with Botox and they're both of these risks are very, very low. Number one is the risk of urinary tract infection. Anytime we put a catheter into the bladder, there's always a risk, but it's very, very low. And we decrease this risk by giving everybody a low dose antibiotic the night before in the morning of the procedure, just to neutralize the urine and decrease the risk. The second risk is incomplete bladder emptying. So remember, Botox is a muscle relaxer. Think of the celebrities and people who get Botox in the face, their muscles can't contract as well. So if you had a really, really amazing response to Botox in your bladder, your bladder might not give it a full squeeze, so you might be left with some urine left in the bladder. This is called urinary retention and it's very rare. It's less than 5% of the people in our practice. How do we screen for this is we check your bladder before we ever do Botox just to make sure it empties all the way. And then we check your bladder again two weeks after Botox just to make sure it empties all the way. Very rarely your bladder hangs onto a little bit more urine if it has a, a big dose of Botox in there and this will wear off with time. So a lot of women get very scared when they hear risks of anything. But I tend to say, listen, you have a risk of getting in your car every day, but the benefit of riding in a car is worth the risk that is very, very rare of, of getting in a car accident when you go out every single day. So everything has risks. The risks with Botox are pretty minimal and we do our best to mitigate and prevent and kind of uh, look at anybody before they get Botox to make sure that they're not already in retention and therefore increasing the risk of more retention. So on your day of your procedure, you eat breakfast, you drive yourself in your car, there's no prep besides taking the low dose antibiotic. You come in to check into our facility center and we get you changed because you do have to be undressed from the waist down. We put you into a room where we have dim lights and we give you warm blankets because we don't want you to get cold and we have you bring a book or your cell phone because you have numbing medicine in your bladder, it's just a jelly. Numbing medicine sits in your bladder for 10 to 15 minutes. Most of my women have zero discomfort with their Botox injections. A lot of women, Get, are very, very relaxed. They're reading a book. They've got a warm blanket on and I come in about 10 to 15 minutes later. So I come in with a little camera. It's a catheter and that catheter camera goes in the bladder and I place the medicine directly into the bladder muscle. It takes me about a minute to do. And we usually chit chat the entire time and most people are surprised that it's done because it's pain free and we're, ch we're chatting the entire time. So after that, we get you dressed, have you go to the bathroom if you need to and then you're on your way. It takes about a week for the Botox to kick in and we see everybody at two weeks after. We check your bladder to make sure it's emptying well at two weeks after. And usually by two weeks after, people know that it's kicked in and they feel like, I feel like I'm more in control of my bladder. I just have more time to get to the bathroom. And you can feel it wearing off in about six to eight months. You just notice maybe your bladder's a little more active again. You just call and say you need more Botox. I want women to be very comfortable with this, know that it's a very well studied, treatment option for overactive bladder, which is incredibly common. Uh, I love to educate women on their options so they come into me more empowered, more knowledgeable, and ready to go with the options that are available. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Casperson. I work at Pacific Northwest Urology and continue to follow us for more fun videos about urology. Thank you. What is Botox not good for? Botox is not good for stress incontinence. Stress incontinence is leaking with cough, sneeze, laugh, or physical activity. So remember, Botox works by relaxing the spasticity and overactive movement of the bladder muscle. Stress incontinence is a weakness in the pelvic floor or sphincter that allows urine to escape. So Botox can't help that problem. Botox is specifically for urge incontinence, not stress incontinence. So if your friend says, hey, I had Botox, and you come in thinking that that's what you want, but keep in mind, Botox is not for everybody. If you have stress incontinence, there's other treatments available, but Botox will not work on that. So I just wanted to clarify on different types of leaking and that Botox is great for overactive bladder, but not great. It's not gonna help you at all if you have stress incontinence.